Hello, this is Professor BRB, and in this video we will be learning how to keyboard special characters and symbols in Adobe InDesign. Digital typefaces, uh, most certainly open type digital typefaces, have many thousands of characters, much more than you can access just from the first level of the keyboard. And in this tutorial we're going to be learning how to find some of these unique uh, characters, such as non-English characters with umlauts and circumflexes and graves and tildes, uh, currency characters, long dashes such as m, m dashes and n dashes, and all kinds of other symbols and even old style figures. So let's get started. Um, go back to our document as we had it. Uh, put your cursor at the end here. And first we're going to type in our label. And this is going to be done in 36 point, which is considered to be a display style. I'm going to hit return here. And if I select this, I can just quickly go and apply my character style labels. So I don't really want to retype the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog so I'll go ahead and copy that and paste it here and I'm gonna hit return and then I'm gonna paste it again I'd like my first one here to be in capitals so if I select that here uh, and um, Go to the type menu and choose change case. I can change that to uppercase. Now you've noticed I've said this is going to be in 36 points, so let's go ahead and select all that type and change it to 36 point, which is considered to be display size. And there we go. So we're off to a good start. So put your cursor here after dog, and maybe uh, if you have a space there, that might be good. And I'm going to type Shift 7 to give me an ampersand, which is a uh, abbreviation for the word and. And um, get another space, and then hit return to give me a new line. And you see I have a paragraph marker here. So the next thing that I want to do is to keyboard some of these non-English um, characters that have a umlaut, a ring, a circumflex, uh, and so forth. And if you look um, on um, the last page of the assignment, if you're not one of my classroom students, you can download this at artpoint.net, uh, you can see that there is a keyboarding um, chart down here that shows you how to access those from an English keyboard. So let's look at the umlaut here. It says option U plus the character. Let's go back and do that. So our first one is going to be an A. So uh, make sure your shift key is disengaged and type option U and then I want a capital A so I hold down my shift key now and type a capital A. And I think I'll type a space there. And then I'm going to hold down, once again, Option U. And then hold down my Shift key and type U. So that was pretty easy. Eh, maybe I didn't need the space there. Well, you, you can have a space or not a space. It's really kind of up to you. Um, and now the next one that we wanted to do uh, has a ring. Let's look at our and uh, which has a ring above the A, and that wasn't in my keyboarding chart. And if you run across that, you have something that's not in the keyboarding chart. There's an alternate way to find uh, other characters. And this is the wonderful Glyphs palette, uh, which you find under the Type menu. So you just choose Type Glyphs, and it will normally uh, display whatever typeface you're working with, although you can change that here. Uh, from this menu. And we are in Garamond Pro Regular, which is just what we want. And you will, if you have never looked at the Glyphs palette before, you will be astonished by 
the thousands of glyphs that make up a digital typeface. I mean, it just goes on and on. And there are so many special characters and foreign language characters and all kinds of things that it's almost difficult to find things. But fortunately, Adobe has given us a little sorter here. And you can just kind of mess around with these and find out oh, where what you're looking for is by um, a little bit of exploration. But if I just go here to basic Latin and Latin 1, it cuts it down quite a bit to just the basic Latin characters and I can see right here is my A with a ring which is just what I want. So I'm gonna double click on that and it should have inserted it uh, just where I wanted it. So that was good. And um, you can see I've also got some of the other characters that I want here. Uh, uh, for example, a U with a circumflex. It's right there. I can just double click on that and put it in there. Or I can go back to my typography guide. Pull this up here. You can see that inserted that just where I told it to. And, um, but an alternate way is to look for it in the typography guide. Um, and I can see right here that I could also have keyboarded that circumflex by doing option I and then the character. So uh, next we're going to do the acute, which um, is the uh, little accent on the top going from the top right down to the left. So that's the acute and we can see that's option E and the character. So uh, let's go back here and hold down our option key, making sure our shift lock is, uh, our caps lock is not on, and um, go option E and then shift O. Type a space here. And now I come up on another one that I cannot find in my typography guide. which is uh, this O with a slash through it. So I'm going to go back to my glyphs palette. I'm going to pull my glyphs palette up here and see if I can find that one. And lo and behold, there it is. So just a double click on that and that inserts it right exactly where I wanted it. So I only have one more uh, which is the tilde, and uh, I know from experience that it, that is another double keyboarding. If I hold down Option N, I get the tilde, and then Shift N, and I've done my first row there, so that looks pretty good. Now what I want to do is repeat these characters in lowercase. So, um, if you want the practice, you can go ahead and keyboard them in lowercase, but if you're in a little bit of a hurry, uh, it's perfectly fine to go edit, copy, and then put your cursor down here, uh, type a space maybe, and just go edit, paste, then select those, and we'll use that trick we learned uh, just a little while ago uh, under the type menu, change case, lowercase. And that uh, solved a problem for us there, so that's great. Um, now, what we want to do is um, we're going to look for these dashes. And these dashes have a very specific meaning and name in typography. This very long dash is called an M dash, E-M, and the short dash is called an N dash. Uh, and you should consult um, your editorial guide as to when you will use these. Um, that's another subject I'll go into later. Right now I'm just going to show you how to find them. InDesign has all kinds of special dashes and special spaces that are not available in a word processing program. If you go to your type menu here, uh, you can go to insert special character, symbols, markers, or hyphens and dashes and you've got all kinds of things here and right here we see you can select your M dash and there it goes I'm gonna put a space in here and you can also uh, 
<clears throat> do your end dash in exactly the same way, hyphens and dashes, end dash. These can also be keyboarded, and um, you can consult the typography guide uh, for the keyboard solutions of these. Uh, the next characters that we want to do are foreign currency marks. So here those are, and I don't really have a keyboarding chart for those. So what I'm going to do is type a space here, and I'm going to go back to my glyphs palette. And here in my sorter, um, I notice I have currency. So that's great. Uh, I can just go ahead and do my euro here. There's my euro. There's my pound sterling. Um, there's my cent mark. There's my US dollar mark. Um, here's my yen. And I think this is, uh, the florin seems to be missing. So um, if you don't have that, if it's not there, just um, substitute something else. That may be one that isn't really used very much anymore. Uh, and if you have an older typeface, you will not probably have a euro in it. Um, one thing I should point out is that we are, if I go back to entire font here, we are working with an open type pro font here. And not all fonts will have this great profusion of characters. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in the future. So I can also find my paragraph mark under insert special character, symbols, paragraph symbol. And my next two symbols are daggers, which I didn't find in that menu. So let's go back to our glyphs palette. And if you sort punctuation, uh, you will see here the dagger and the double dagger. Um, and then for our additional symbols. Uh, I believe that you can find all of those in um, the InDesign insert special character symbols. So we have here the registered trademark. Oops, Daisy. Let me go there back there, insert special character symbols. And we have the um, trademark symbol. Symbols and the ellipsis. Uh, and if you ever do need those three periods that indicate uh, a partial quote, uh, make sure you do not just type three periods. Make sure you use the correct ellipsis character. Uh, that's very important for professional typesetting. So there we go. Okay, that's great. The only thing we have to do left is our numbers. So I'm going to type a return here and type there. And these are standard figures, um, which are called lining figures. And if I copy these and type a space and paste them here, uh, because this is an open type pro font, it has a separate um, set of figures and that's uh, pretty interesting. So let's uh, take a look here and uh, if we go up into our control bar we can see we have an open type menu and this will only be available in open type fonts and not even in all open type fonts. And you can see down at the bottom here it says default figure style but it has various other possibilities and I am going to choose proportional old style. These are also sometimes called lowercase figures because they have ascenders and descenders. Uh, and they can add a very nice touch uh, to uh, a piece of typesetting. I myself like them and use them quite a bit. Now if you find yourself with a bit of extra time and a little bit of extra space uh, on your page, you might want to delve back into your glyphs palette and just look at some of the really interesting um, characters that you have available. For example, ornaments. Well, that's kind of nice. Garamond Pro has these three little pretty ornaments. 
So you might want to just put those in there on your sample page to remind you that you have them. Uh, you could look at the ligatures. Uh, and what a ligature is, is it is a um, single character made up of two characters. And there are just all kinds of other things here. Uh, for example, uh, we have standard ligatures right there. You might want to include some of these because they're not the same in all typefaces. And we even have discretionary ligatures um, right up here. Uh, there's just one in, in this particular typeface, but that's kind of interesting, sort of archaic. Uh, and feel free to do a little bit of exploring and add some extra characters in here if you would like to, because there's a bit of extra space on this page. 